Hey, this is Ollie from Broadside, and this is the Cookhouse. Order up! Hey, this is Ollie. I sing in a band called Broadside, and basically we're a pop rock band from the East Coast. At one point, we probably came from one place, but now we're like a buffet, like a lot of stuff. Maybe too much, but that's it. <laughs> Well, don't be a weirdo. That's definitely the, the first thing that I would do. The, the best learning that I really achieved throughout my years being one, the front man of a band, and two, like somebody who wants to, wants to be the front man of a band, um, I had to learn to check my ego. So a lot of that is just being present and playing the shows, opening for bands, you know, being cool to the local venues, being cool to like, local promo people, um, doing your shit on time and doing what you say you will do. And that just gains respect and notoriety in your community. So when it does come time for you, if you're presented with an opportunity to pop off, your community will be there to hold up, you know, those walls for you in the, in the beginning because they're super flimsy. So, you know, if you got, say, a couple hundred kids going to bat for you hard, one, that helps your early marketing, and then two, that helps your, your early branding, and, and obviously it helps you look, and, and it says a lot about you if you can have a local fan base in 2021. That's what I would say. I mean, when my band first started popping off, we were just doing local shows on the floor, so a lot of times we were just borrowing gear from the friends. There were like seven, eight bands on this house show. We'd play at like two in the morning sometimes, but the eight people that weren't blacked out, they were there at every other show after that, you know, and then eight becomes double that and double and triple. I think there's power in that. So build a community around you as a person and that's your band and listen, you know, it's okay to be a fan and you can learn a lot from being a fan of someone even. It doesn't even have to be a band, it could be a person. So yeah, imagine who you think is cool and be that person. Unless it's like Jake Paul or something. <laughs> so I find that the best way to get anything done is to have someone else do it for you. <laughs> I mean, if you give your full intent to that person. So like, I think getting a manager early on is really smart, even if it's just somebody that isn't going to manage your money per se, but manage your early steps and your steps in, in towards whatever direction. It's almost just like having like a family member say like, like you go to them like, hey, I just got accepted to this, or I just got this job, or you know, Barbara Lee is pregnant, what should we do? You know, you would respect their opinion. And it's kind of like what a manager is, is saying like, hey, can you tell this person that we need to get money, even if it's $100, whatever, whatever. If you have somebody taking the weight off of you, but you're giving them what they can and can't say, and they're getting paid for that potentially, it, it allocates a lot of that awkwardness. So, you know, what I was doing for a while is when I wasn't touring in the beginning, I would work like a, a job, like a regular job, obviously. And throughout the week, I would say, okay, I'm not gonna buy lunch today because this is gonna be lunch on tour. You know, like that sort of weird thing you have to do when you're broke, but it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, if you have a savings account, most people do when they open a bank account. But if if you wanna be smart, I'm, I'm pretty much a nerd with finances at this point, but you know, if you have something like a high yield savings account or a savings account where you can just kind of put the, that extra 10 bucks, leave it, set it, forget it, it's there for you on tour. And then one, that sort of thing will pay off in your long term because that's legitimately how you become an adult. You know, it's like, if you don't want to be broke on tour, then don't allow yourself to be. And don't feel the need to buy snacks and chips and every, <coughs> yes, that, you know, it's not good for your mind, it's not good for your health. You'll regret it when you're throwing up an hour later and pissing in a Gatorade bottle. How did you eat? <laughs> but yeah, just budget. <laughs> it's really no secret. Just don't be dumb and, and try to save up your money and know if you have a whole account with money in it that you know is gonna get spent, imagine what it feels and you spend it on the wrong thing. That hurts, right? Save my money. But imagine what happens when you spend it on the right thing. Millionaire, baby. Tony Robbins. Well, I am a 
Justin's a diva, over the top person. I gotta be clean. Minus this very nice fat beard I got going on right here. Very thick and full, like a real burly guy. But uh, no, so basically, um, it's gonna get nasty. You're gonna have to shower in the sink at Walmart, okay? You're gonna be taking baby wipes to the bottom of your feet saying, would anybody buy these on Depop? I'm just kidding. But it'll cross your mind. No, um, it's it's really just like, I wear, I've so with the mask thing, it's funny, cause I've been wearing a mask on tour this entire time. Um, it's a vocalist thing, it's like, what I, I, if I sleep in a van, I'm not breathing in people's germs, you know? Everybody's got going on. It's six, sometimes seven, eight bodies cramped into a van in the middle of Utah when it's snowing outside. Like, I'm not trying to catch what they catch, you know what I'm saying? Um, you just gotta protect yourself. So, I wash my body there, I work out every single day, because it's just, as a performer, it's good for that, but also it's just good for my mind. It gives me something to do. And, um, drop, Drop that shame, and when you get a shower, don't be stupid. Like, there were many times in the beginning when we'd be on tour with a cool band, and we'd finally save $70 to go get a room, and we'd be like, we'd go in on the off day, and they'd be like, all right, this band's going to Applebee's. Do we want to go to Applebee's with them? And I remember I did that a few times, and then I hung out way too late, came back, and just didn't get to shower. How stupid is that? Like, how dumb is that? It didn't get any further with that other band. And I was vegan, I, I can't even eat shit there. What was I doing? I'm sucking sweet teas like a like a maniac. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's like it's like you should just have one of those. You know what's trending on like TikTok? Everybody doing the like van life thing. I was like, yeah, I wanna go do this. And I'm like, it's sick that so many people are having this break free, bird out of the cage moment. But then like they don't think about themselves like the bucket or like the plumbing that they can't afford, you know, in their van. Um, and uh, I, I just like to, th <laughs> I just like to think like, you gotta break that down and become like the, the traveling like nomadic mindset if you wanna live like that. I mean, it's essentially just a modern circus. That's really all it is. You know, you roll up, you unload and you say, look at my show, look at my show. Peanuts or whatever. I don't know, I've never been to a circus. <laughs> what am I saying? What day is it, should I leave? <laughs> But yes, gym membership, sorry, there it is. Yeah, get a gym membership so you can shower every day. In a bucket. So luckily I find that um, a lot of these like hubs and centers, especially like the bigger middle of the country ones, they're gonna have so many options. Luckily we are living in a situation where like, if you have to, you could go to Burger King and get like a Beyond Meat Burger or what, Impossible Walk, whatever it is. It's not gonna be the best thing for you, but. It's not marketed or sold as like a healthier option. It's just like a an option for those people, right? And so, um, for so like ethically and stuff like that, you you can always navigate that by just knowing your diet, your body, one. And if you're really not down with like mock meat or anything like that, you know, just swing by a grocery store, save yourself tons of money, get a little cooler, one of those little coolers that like drip resistant or whatever. So a stow a bunch of stuff, throw it under your seat, and then it's all right there. It's no different than living at home. It's just living in like a much smaller, stinkier foot palace. But some people are into that. I miss uh, experiencing new places. I'm kind of crazy in the sense of like, I get complacent wherever I go and I get really inspired by new things and new people and new places and I feel like not feeling safe enough to travel, um, one for pleasure and two for my job. You know, it's difficult um, to be real. I mean, that's, that's how you get far is by being one of those people that needs attention and craves people's authority and like respect. So like when I can't present my art in front of that sort of audience, it goes a bit blurry to me, like what is my actual talent? <laughs> I'm used to like that instant validation. And I've tried a bunch of things on, during this pandemic to try to get like cool on the internet. And it all fills me with such emptiness and such like dread, you know? Cause I'm like, this doesn't feel authentic some people react to it fondly, but I'm also like, this is so hard to do every day. I just want to go on tour and sing and cry on stage. And instead I cry in my bathroom in the shower.
and it's not the same. <laughs> I have so many good memories. Um, all right, so I went to this place while we were in England, and we pulled off on the side of the road. My friends surprised me, and I was sleeping. I was in a slumber. They woke me up, and they said, look where we are, and I looked outside, and it was a giant castle, and I said, wow, this is beautiful. The guy said, our driver said, this is the Durham Cathedral, and I said, whoa. He said, yeah, they filmed like 13 Harry Potter scenes here, and I'm an absolute dweeb for Harry Potter, so I said, what? So there's a bunch of photos of me walking through the hallways of this, um, like the students would, and hanging outside of McGonagall's office. You know, just millennial, you know, geeking out about Harry Potter. But I mean, to be fair, at the time I was living in LA and I, I saw these like movie places like my, where Michael Jackson shot Thriller and all this, and, I'm, and I love that stuff. So to be in like a, a building that was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old and to them they were just like, oh yeah, they filmed Harry Potter here. It's kind of like surreal that they have buildings that are older than some of our country. And people are just like, yeah, Hermione Granger walked right there. And I was like, and also, Vikings died here maybe, I don't know. <laughs> All right, the craziest thing that's happened to me on tour was I got a strep throat and I didn't know. And I was on tour with a band called Silverstein and I was singing every night for like two weeks straight. The, 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 the tour was like two months long, so it was a pretty long one, or it was spread out or something weird. And um, obviously, different type of crowd, they expect a vigorous performance. So, you know, I had strep throat and I just kept taking like Advil at night, like some sort of crazy drug addict. And then I started taking cough medicine, because I thought it was that. And it just kept numbing and numbing and numbing. And then we had our show in LA, and I went to go sing. And I sang perfectly that night, and then I got off stage, and my fiance looked at me and she said, that was great. And I said, and I was halfway through a tour, and my voice was just gone. It's like, I was on stage, and I was like, damn, I sound good. Like, I knew that cough medicine was working. And then I went up, and I just basically just had grinded it down, and the callus had just gotten so gnarly on my voice box, on top of the strep, that they had to give me like an antibiotic, and. I was out for like two days and missed like three, four days of tour. But I know you're probably expecting me to say something fun, but that shit taught you so much is when I was like, that alone made you want to be like, I'm going to do a thousand push-ups every day. I don't want my body to ever embrace any sort of sickness again. Cause that's embarrassing, you know, being up in front of like 800 people and you're like, give my, my all. And in the back of your head, you're like, it's that damn, it's that damn cough medicine. Nope, you're dying and you don't want to admit it. It's crazy. Like I was like, oh, I'm healed. Like I literally got, I literally went up to her and I was like, yeah. And I was like, and I just freaked out immediately. She took me home and went, went to the, uh, I don't know, your quick service doctor or whatever the next morning. And they were like, bro, bro. You're f <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm pretty busy. Um, so I write poetry um, as well. And I've just been finishing up my second book. I released my first book like a couple months before the pandemic hit. And um, so yeah, I'm just finishing that. So I've been editing that and getting all that. I just started on the, the book cover process. So the fun process for me, everything else is dreadful. Minus writing it. So I've been doing that. I have a, I had a puppy, like week one of the pandemic. He's a miniature dachshund. He's a nightmare, but I love him with everything that I have. He just doesn't know how to turn off his barker. It's like, it's just like, he can't, you know, it's like he has to speak. I guess he learned from me. Um, so I've been doing that. So much reading, I'm a big nerd. Um, you know, I get into working out, I get out of it, in and out, in and out. One week I'm buff, one week, I don't even care. Why even get up, you know? Oh, I got a PlayStation 5. Yep, like right at the beginning of this as well, like when they came out and there's no games. Well, you know, I look at it every now and then and download whatever's free. 
So yeah, I've been doing a lot. Oh, and then I did this, I work with this program called Featured X. It's a company and um, I just basically how it works is they serve as like a middleman for me to talk to bands and bands can reach out and say, hey, we want to hire you for a feature or music video appearance or like maybe work with a song. So I've been doing that. I think I've done like six features now in like seven months. So that's a lot of work. And then we released an album in the middle of this. Um, so it's been kind of navigating the idea that next time we return to playing shows, the album will be out for a year and a half and we've never played a single song, even together, live on this album. So that'll be fun. But I've been super busy. Um, again, I go crazy when, when I'm with myself. And so I'm always trying to do something to fill my time, trying to make some coin. I love making money, so I like, you know, I'm obviously into like the investing side of things, but I'm also into like building stuff, doing things, creating things, and working with people because I just have money. <laughs> I like making money for people and with people. And I like when people like what they're doing. So if we're doing something we like and we're making money, it's kind of like dapping up God, you know? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go with Vans. Um, they're just, you, if they're clean, the clean, they almost look like you're just rocking, like you're living your life in the best way, but if they're dirty, it's like you're down with the cause, like you don't care about your shoes, like you you skateboard, you, you might stage dive, you might, you know, just partake in wearing a really dope, professionally American shoe, man. I, it's just, there's nothing better than a clunky something that might last you longer than most things last you these days. Levi and Vans. I mean, dream made in heaven. We go with Jonas Brothers. I don't really know uh, enough about either to defend, but I know I get my ass by certain people in my band if I didn't say Jonas Brothers. So, Jonas Brothers. Music. I turn up every time I clean my kitchen, when I'm working on my balcony, when I'm doing yoga. It's like, I'm, I'm listening to music 24 seven. It's almost getting kind of scary. When I walk my dog, he, he might even be trying to talk to me. He might even be speaking to me. And I'll miss that moment, you know? When my baby's gonna be born some in the future, I'm gonna miss it because I'm gonna be listening to AirPod Pro 11s. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna miss him crying. It's that important to me, music. <laughs> oh man, for sure Nickelodeon. I mean, that's where all the weirdos were born. You know, Disney, sure, great writing, great casting. They went on to do great things. But Nickelodeon was where's that like, hey, are you weird? Isn't this weird that we just want to be covered in this goo, all of us? Yeah, Lonely. it's strange. So Nickelodeon, for sure. Come on, man. Bro, I would clean the toilets at Hogwarts just to go to Hogwarts, you feel me? Like, I would polish the shoes. You know what I'm saying? I would tell muggles, no photos. I would be the guy that stands outside the gate and says, no photos. That's what I would do, just to go to Hogwarts. And like, who who wouldn't be? This one sucks, bro. Put me in a place where I have a chance to be a snake. And a bald man. A month without the internet, I feel like I could use it. I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and the internet is only just reminding you that this is how you fix your depression or this is why you should be depressed. So yeah, maybe I should get away. Go live in my car. Like those TikTok people. That <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, who's got Storm? No one? <laughs> All right. Oh, true? What about um, Mystique? All right, let's rock with the vendors then. X-Men, ladies. Lightsaber for sure. I mean, yeah, I might not get close to him at all, but at least I'm gonna die with a lightsaber in my hand. That's so sick. <laughs> Alien Invasion, just so I could be like, I knew it, man. Like, I knew that was, I knew it was weird when I was driving through New Mexico. I knew it was weird when I looked up at the sky and it winked at me. 
when I was 11. Aliens, bring them. Take me home. Okay, to have diarrhea or to be constipated. To be constipated, man. I've talked myself out of a lot of stuff, you know? I'll probably meditate my way through some constipation. But diarrhea, it's so embarrassing. You're just a lifeless, wet person. You're just skin and bones at that moment. Just Your body's just extracting everything. It's just saying you're so stupid. You can't even run your own skin, you idiot. Constipation. You're just kind of being like, I could, but nah, I can't. <laughs> Alligators seem so terrifying. Like, I don't really understand their whole vibe. I know they're strong in the jaws, and I know that I don't really even know what they eat. I'm gonna be real with you. They seem slow and stupid, but they're just not, and I know that. So yeah, I'll fight an alligator. <laughs> Read the book, always. Oh, shower gel, bar soap? Bar soap, I mean, you're committed to, you know, a certain type of thing. And I'll tell you what, when I was single, bro, it is a lot easier to get someone to use your shower gel when they need to, you know, go to work the next day or whatever than it is to get somebody to use your bar soap. So, fellas, let's just upgrade it, you feel me? Languages. Languages for sure. I realize when you go to another country and you can't, it's not charming to just be yourself and be funny if they can't understand your jokes. So imagine if I could be witty and funny and cute and charming in 10 different places. It seems a lot cooler. If you travel, I guess, right? No, that's important. You can brag to people. You can, if you have a dad, you could be like, I speak 10 languages and you get $7 an hour, you know? Whatever, however your relationship is, you know? At Wendy's, it's fine, no shade to Wendy's. Just dads. Hey guys, once again, this is Ollie from Broadside. Uh, you can follow me everywhere online on any sort of thing that you have at Oliver Baxter with two X's. Oliver, B-A-X-X-T-E-R. And uh, yeah, this has been The Cookhouse. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, audit. Tell everybody I say audit, please. And if you're gonna live in a van, consider everything. Everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you might have tile in your one bedroom, 200 square feet loft, but your husband and your dog are shitting like next, next to you, reading your little poetry. That's it, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks.